All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, final workshop in our uh, online um, training with regards to our level one coaching. Um, just a reminder that uh, the practical workshop is from Monday until Wednesday. And those that have uh, registered, we look forward to seeing you there. And uh, SIPA is very excited to get you guys on court and uh, get going on the practical side of things. So uh, without wasting too much time, just a couple of reminders. Please keep your microphones off. Don't worry about having your videos on. It will save you some data. Um, and yeah, you can uh, just put up your hands if you want to ask questions as we go. And without further ado, Sipa, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, good evening, guys. And uh, welcome again uh, to our Level 1 coaching program for Under Wheelchair Basketball South Africa. Hope everybody is good. Yeah. Um, uh, just to a bit of refreshment, uh, uh, refreshing uh, 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 cases whereby we uh, previously spoke about our tech, um, uh, technical uh, skills. Um, uh, like we talk about chess skills, we spoke about uh, ball handling and shooting, and um, and chair positioning, and you know all of that. So we're now moving through to our technical skills, our technical skills map. Pardon me. So uh, tactical skills, these are decision-making skills needed within the sport. Uh, basically, um, uh, 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 so you look at step one, I tried to actually put it down under step one, step two, step, step three and four. So uh, basically in step one, um, I'll come back to the diagram here at the bottom, but I'm just gonna run through this, the, step, the four steps. So step one, just go back to step one, please. Okay. Uh, is to identify the important decision needed to play, sorry, to play the, the sport. So uh, they're supposed to be all there. So you, it, it's the decision making. These are very, very crucial um, um, skills that are needed or elements that are needed in a game. This is, this is what actually excites me the most when we're in a game, like the, the decision making, you know, uh, rather than the technical ability. Are you able, technical ability means you can shoot from the distance, you can uh, tilt your chair, you can do whatever, but the tactical ability of uh, being able to identify an open man, being able to identify a gap, being able to, um, uh, 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 to pass off, roll back, go for a screen, go for a pick, but I'm gonna be coming back to the first um, um, uh, uh, sort of a diagram over there. Point number two, step number two. Um, uh, determine what knowledge is needed to make a good decision regarding, regarding the situation. So now you can see the situation. Now you need to know what you need to do. That's point number three. This, um, uh, so these are all what your players should be able to, 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 to do uh, with, in a game situation. Step number three, and identify the clue. You know, it's a cue there, the sign, it's a, the cue there is main signs that should be recognized and 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 act upon and help to uh, um, determine a cause of action for each cue. So it's important now you you, you have identified the, the, the sign. What 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 is the defense giving you? Um, uh, most of the coaches will speak about uh, the read and react. Um, is the team playing a zone defense? Is the team playing a man to man defense? You're on offense, how do you um, uh, counter that? So um, you, you have to identify what the defense is giving you. You read and react. And identify number, oh, sorry, step number four, ident identify the appropriate tactical option. So this basically the guidelines, the rules, your ugly should follow in, um, in order to take or to, or to make the tactical decision. So now let's go back to the first one. Okay, so um, uh, obviously we've got X and, and, and zeros there and, and O's. So the, 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 the guys like uh, or zeros are actually the defensive team, the X's are the offensive team. So both carrier, uh, we call them point guards, on top of the key has got the ball. So um, 
the, 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 um, the defensive player oh, uh, is actually approaching the ball carrier and putting pressure on the three-point line. Now, um, realizing that um, the ball carrier decides to pass the ball you know, to, to, to his uh, teammate um, on, uh, on the left-hand side there in order to release pressure from him. Decision-making there, realizing what's going on. There's one player X that is actually screening where on the right-hand side, there's two players there that are actually looking to play uh, either a seal or they're going to be um, uh, doing a, um, uh, 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 a seal or, or maybe a screen. So he passes the ball to the left-hand side where there is a player open. You know, it's just slightly away from the defensive team. Okay, now let's go to the uh, next, uh, next one, um, Seth Smith. Okay, so once again, uh, step two, now he decides the ball carrier on top of the three-point line to uh, go down and do a seal or a peak on the right hand side that will allow you know the player popping up and coming up to the top and playing you know playing be a balance so just to balance the floor and come through the three point line or just um, the, the ball carrier pop up to his left hand side and receive the ball so these are the decision makings that is is needed and then once you'll find that in most cases you know, once the ball has been released, the player on top of the of, of the key, the, 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 point line, the defensive player on top of the key, they decide to sag a bit. They come low to the, uh, to, um, excuse me, to the uh, th uh, free throw line. So when they do that, when they sag, then it, it's either the guy that is a ball carrier or pawn guy will sit on the three point line, wait for the ball to come back to him, or he pops out and do um, um, uh, uh, a, a relief pass uh, and receive a ball back, or he can go low. But if a player oh is sagging too much and comes just below the the, the free throw line, obviously that gives you know our the point guard X on top a space to just roll forward, receiving a ball, maybe take take the shot from the top of the key or alternatively, he can rotate and come to the right-hand side and do a seal or maybe do a peak for um, uh, the next player to balance the floor and come to the top, uh, top of the key. Okay. So if you look at the right-hand side of, of the diagram, you know, and on all of these guys, we, 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 we are going to put it down in action at, at our, our practical sessions, you know. So, um, we, we we know now that you know um, uh, guys like myself, you know, um, uh, as old as I am, we used to practice, you know, via or the skills that we used was the traditional way. So um, you'll find that the traditional way of, of coaching was 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 introduced to new players, uh, basically somebody that's just recently been injured. And obviously doesn't know the sport, doesn't know how to push the chair, doesn't know how to uh, dribble the ball, but doesn't know how to shoot. Then the coach will spend more time with us with that player, trying to show the player and 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 correct the player in terms of you know um, the fundamentals or the skills needed to play the game. So. Um, where else the game situation? Uh, uh, what is now sort of the game like practice sessions, they actually counter uh, all the, 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 the negatives of the traditional way, whereby you're just giving you know, drills. As a, as a coach, you're giving out drills or you do drills that are game-like situation. So um, the, the diagram on the right-hand side, you, you see um, um, uh, a drill on one side of the court where you cut out one area you're allowing your players to play on only on one side where there is a three on three situation one is a ball carrier um on top of the three point line and the other two at the bottom they they're playing a, a screen so um uh, that allows a player the players you know uh, to make a decision as to what would be a good decision um uh, uh, to make 
uh, sometimes you will find that, okay, fine, there is a screen being set and I'm in a three, um, um, a, a three point line and I'm a very, very good shooter at the three point line. Do I then pass the ball to the right hand side where the, the, there is an option of my high that will actually do um, or take the outside shot or do I take the shot from the three point line because I know this is my strength. But if there is a defense of, on me, do I carry on um, um, uh, taking that shot or do I actually pop it out on the, uh, on the right hand side and allow you know my, um, my, my either my high pointer or my mid pointer, even the low pointers um, uh, to pass off from the screen and roll, uh, and, and roll slowly forward and take the shot from the side. So those are decision-making uh, situations because those situations there, they do okay in a game situation. So this is pretty much what, you know, the modern basketball is, 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 is all about now. Like where you apply your drills and your drills must be on, um, excuse me, uh, your drills must be in a, a similar or maybe uh, structured like as if it's in a game situation. But if you look at the opposite side, you know, the right-hand side of the diagram there, there's now we see there's like four players being introduced. And you can see from the, the right-hand side, it's just there is a one-on-one -on, -one on top there. And there's a one-on-one -on, -one on top of the, uh, of the key three-point uh, three line. And then um, there's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, on the 45, and two, sorry, two-on-two -on, -two on the 45. And once again, they're either playing the screen or they're going to be uh, doing a seal. So once again, this is these are game-like situations where you need to make a decision. And um, um, uh, uh, some of the teams have, have observed them that they, they tend to sort of load one side and allow the skillful players to take um, 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 uh, uh, the players one on one on the opposite side, just giving them space. Let them work from baseline to the top, you know, of the elbow of the, of the key of, uh, or, or to the 45 on one-on-one. -on -one. So it depends on your game approach and your tactical decision that you have to do in a game situation. So th this is more, more or less what we now driving towards, or maybe we should be driving towards, because it's all, that, that's like sort of modern um, uh, basketball. Yes, um, uh, there still is a room for traditional way because for newcomers, um, they definitely have, got, you've got to be spending more time explaining rather than allowing them to play. You know, so um, in this particular case, we, 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 we opt in to take more of a modern type of approach whereby our skilled, you know, maybe semi-developed players to 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 um, uh, to play or prepare themselves in a game like situation, and our practices uh, should be structured in that way or in that manner. And next slide. Oh, unless there's a question. Any question, Fred? But this is more of an exciting part of the game, to be honest. This is where um, most of the uh, most of the teams, you know, are losing games because of the decision making. Have I, did I do or did I make a, a good decision? You know, and sometimes you'll find that the, uh, uh, the uh, you'll find that the high point that is inside the key has got a mismatch, and I'm probably sitting on top of the uh, free throw line. And I want to take the shot. A shot. I know I'm going to make that shot, but is it a good decision to take a shot from there, or is it a better decision or great decision to pop it up to pop it down inside the key to my high pointer against, you know, a low pointer and take it so uh, and take a shot from there. In terms of percentage, what would be the good decision? You guys can make a decision for yourself there. But these are the things that you're going to be coming up in our practice session. So. Um, you, you've got to you've got to be able to uh, or allow your players or maybe teach the players being able to identify um, um, those easy shots or easy passes, you know, or picks 
before they actually make a decision to whether taking a shot of field of green or a pickup. Is there anything around the tactical decision sites? Okay, no, thank you. All right. So before you engage yourself in any practice session, make sure that you, you prepare your, your team or, or you allow the players to prepare their muscles, their body well. So the warm up. Is, is 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 very very important okay uh, your stretches are very very important why excuse me why is the warm-up um uh warm-ups are, 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 are crucial in a game this helps to prepare for a practice or the game before the games before practice session you have got to make sure that your your players they they, they warm up properly and it's always it's good to have a physiotherapist if you if you if you get access to that to help you prepare the players why because it's it actually involves the joint movement on the mobility um and 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 obviously for um and obviously like i said over there the ball also for the players to familiarize themselves with the ball it also prepares the heart you know your cardiovascular and the muscle temperature you know it also increases uh, the specific skills, okay, and specific tactics, and this is where everything comes to play now when it comes to the the, uh, the the tactics, and 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 everything that you apply. Yes, you have done all your technical abilities. You're now able to push your chair. You know how to hold your chair. The, the world, you know how to uh, pivot. You have no your agility is up, but now you you need to prepare your body. You cannot go into a game and your muscles are not really prepared, you know. So it it it, it helps as, as as for individuals and it helps uh, as a group, you know, activities in a way that now you understand each other because you'll find sometimes the players are coming on court and everybody's a bit down or one player probably is a bit down, and then it, as a group you now can elevate or maybe lift up the, that one player spirit because. You need that player to focus, and 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 warm ups are designed has got to be designed in in a manner of also helping the mindset and and being able to focus in a game. Okay, um, it's always ideal to use a full court activities. Yes, in a game situation, um, uh, you have to use your half court. So, um, uh, but it, it it's always ideal in that your practice session to use a full court. You know to prepare your team any questions there okay uh, there is a video somewhere so we we, we are pointed out like the joint movement obviously your arm so you you stretch your arms you obviously in most cases people will start with their necks and then stretch your neck, your arms, your your your, your hip, because you want to make sure that you, you, your range of movement it it it's it, 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 it's adequately um, okay. Your range of movement is, is is adequately ready and prepared. Your body is now ready to 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 perform the activities that are about to happen in a game situation or alternatively in your practice sessions. Okay. Um, obviously, it's movement and skills activities, okay, on the wheelchairs, gradual increase and in intensity. So it has got to be the spirit, uh, the intensity of your warm-up sessions has got to be high, okay. It also helps with individual skills, okay. I've mentioned that the tactical skills, okay, coordinative, the in, um, internal focus in, uh, in, in, in an early stages, Okay. changing okay to external as well okay you oh, oh, because at towards the end of the game or towards the end of your 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 one changing you, you you need to make sure that every time you 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 work for you know to 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 ex extend your 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 sessions um in a positive way and then when we towards the uh, the later part the external part of the game 
um, uh, once the players are actually off court, now you need to also prepare them to um, uh, to get ready for probably the second half, you know, of the game, and uh, also get them ready, you know, when you cooling them down as well. So there is a cool down situ um, uh, uh, a meta situation, and also there is uh, obviously warm up, and after the practice session, there's a cool down. Okay. Okay, a self scans and frequently it helps also, also help yourself to just maybe me, now and again check yourself. Am I ready to perform? You know, so um, players they they tend to come in and get onto the chairs. They just want to play, you know. So without the body being prepared properly, it also helps with the mental status as well. Okay, uh, uh, fully ready, focused, and you do not hear anything else, but your mind is actually locked in the game or the practice session that you're about to engage to. Okay, you can gradually, in, um, uh, it can help you to gradually increase or build intensity into the game level, okay? And, and it's used to focus and intense strategies uh, to adjust. So um, uh, once again, uh, once your focus levels are up and the intensities, uh, intensity of your practice session is, is going to be um, a, a greater or maybe the performance going to be higher uh, uh, because you have applied a proper strategy in your warm-up sessions and once again you know we uh, you, you you work on your arms you work on your your neck you work on your hip you work on your mindset in order to uh, to be ready for the game is there anything around warm-up and it's very crucial guys we cannot take warm-up uh, um excuse me you cannot take warm-up situations lightly. It's very, very important that you guys and the players are ready immediately as soon as they actually hit the floor. And before you engage them in any activities, they've got to do the work. They gotta be ready. They gotta warm up proper. Go ahead, Caesar, with your question. Uh, good evening. Um, I want to ask if is there such a thing as warming up too much? to a point where they get tired in the game? No. Um, it's, remember now, warm-up, it's all about joint movement and, 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 and flexibility and focus. And you, don't want, you do not want to stretch your players too much. And there's certain stretch movement that you have got to do. And uh, in most cases, they, they, we're looking at 30 seconds. Let's just maybe say, you're working on your arms, you're stretching your arms, you, you hold your, um, uh, uh, your, your arms across your chest, your right arm across your chest towards your left, you hold it for 30 seconds. If there is a bit of pain coming through, then you allow, you tell that player and say, hang on, relax, because this, it shouldn't give you pain. You shouldn't, get, you shouldn't take it to the, to the extent whereby they, 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 they it, your your warm up is more of like your 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 practice, you know, your 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 effort. So your warm up has got to be able to 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 give flexibility, and 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 most more specifically around your your range of movement and your joint movement. So um, you you shouldn't push your warm up sessions too far. And in most cases, um, if I'm not mistaken, we used to do it for about ten minutes. Just to warm up, just ten minutes maximum. Just to come in, Never the, put just to come in from from Asa there, Sips. It's uh, it's important that when you start the game, that your players are at a um, at a at a stage where their their blood flow is is up. Um, you know, so that you know, so that they are warm, because you'll see even with the with the national teams, and you know, if they haven't done a, a good warm up prior to the game. It takes yeah. them probably three, four minutes to get into the game. And at the international level, especially the other teams, you know, you, you, you cannot take three minutes to get into the game because you find yourself 15, 20 points down, so your game's over. So it's important that, that, you, that you do a lot of, um, you know, sort of a lot of cardio so you get the, uh, the, the heart rate up and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, not, a, not, not to overdo it. But, um, you know, uh, I know like the colleges like for example um, illinois they even they they practice the pre-game warm-up 
for one practice session. So one of their practice sessions is just on the warm-up. So mm -hmm. it is a very important aspect. Very crucial. Thanks. Thanks, Caesar. Any other questions around, um, around warm-up side? So um, I, I did I did actually touch a little bit on the, the cool down. So now you have engaged yourself to this high intent uh, practice session or alternate or maybe a game situation. Um, now you 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 need to recover. Okay. So um, remember, in most cases, you 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 sweat a lot. Um, you dehydrate. So the muscles need to uh, uh, repair themselves. Now you need to relax your body, and 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 the cool down. It's it, it. This is where it comes in, you know. And uh, your 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 physiotherapist, uh, even you as a coach, you should be wary of 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 such, you know, because you'll find that some of the players will even cramp, you know, after after the game. And the reason for that is because the body has taken a, quite a bit of um, hammering, if with the lack of a, of a better word, uh, they've taken a bit of hammering during the, the practice session and or maybe in the game. Then now, so now your body needs to recover. Okay, so you can get your players to 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 the baseline of um, uh, of the court, let them roll, you know, um, using the full court roll up and down you know for just pushing not like speeding just a normal push let them roll throughout the end of the court and obviously um uh, uh, you can ask them to roll back towards the end of the court you you can um prepare them uh, uh drinks you know uh, uh, rehydrates and let them have their rehydrates and this will also help you know to 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 um to help the muscles uh, build or maybe speed up the process of healing, so to say, you know, after a very intense uh, game situation. And um, uh, we we used to have what we, they call the the an ice bath. You know, uh, if if the coaches look and and think that you have actually put in everything on court, they'll take you and throw you in an ice bath. And that also helps, you know, to to speed up the process, especially if you're in a tournament, to the, to speed up the process of, of 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 the muscles, you know, healing. And um, uh, so the cool down also helps with, you know, to to, to uh, uh, can even use you know, like I called it there, uh, ball massage, you know, that will also find and trigger the the, the the joints and the points that are needs to be stretched, and it prepares and helps to stretch other. Uh, you can help and prepare to stretch others like you can hold each other's arm lift up at the you know and one comes to the back and then lift up your arms and then you you, you twist you turn you push it up and uh, you push up your arms uh, push up the, your, your 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 teammates arm upward and 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 until you find a, a range whereby it says no stop and this is now sort of painful and then you stop over there and then relaxes again you know so uh, I did mention that two, uh, the laps, um, you can do two laps on court and um, uh, just getting the shoulders working, you know, and um, uh, well, let's say I got it arithmetically because you need to make sure that there is sort of a relaxed motion coming through as, as you're cooling down. And you, you tell your players that they need to fully, fully calm down. And even, you know, like some sometimes you find the soccer players they will end up uh, sort of walking around the field, you know, you know, just to make sure that they 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 they, but they have their muscles relaxing, you know. And um, with us on court, we just maybe having those two laps, like slowly, and making sure that they're actually pushing slowly. They're not speeding up because you want the muscle to heal, you know. And obviously, as I said, uh, give them some drinks, and they can have drinks in between as well during the practice session. But even afterwards, you know, even if you say a player is actually cramping, try and make sure that they, you, you increase the drinks. You know? And also to help that and heal the muscles to speed up the process of healing, like having fruit, especially banana, 
it's very important to have during your training sessions and also during the game situation. Okay, you can take them down for breathing exercise. That just to you know that as Mr. Smith mentioned, your kaido, you know, and you can you can have your your blood shooting skyrocketing, and you 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 want your players to quickly you know relax. You gotta have them relaxing, and um, uh, uh, having a breathing exercise. They inhale, exhale slowly, inhale and exhale slowly. You know, so that actually the muscles is the heart, the heart inside. You know, so. Um, cooling down is also also very very important. I know sometimes we 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 all press for time, and nowadays everybody wants to play play play. Quickly off they went, you know they go to the showers and dress up. Off they go. Now please make sure that your players understand. You know they must understand the level of you know um, of the body that could take. You know so the body needs to recover before anything anything there guys any question go ahead Cesar. uh it's Mulema from limpopo so the problems is that the us in limpopo we don't have the the someone who can who can maybe take our players to do muscles so i don't know how will i help them to get ready to the so that the, the massage can be strong hmm. um that, that's the reason why you here sir so okay. that's why we actually having this training and what type of exercises what type of um, um, muscle uh, training or strength training has got to be done in order to help your players. And um, like I said, if you do have a physiotherapist and, um, and, and once your players have been classified and your play, you would know your players' um, uh, abilities, you know, um, uh, the range of movement, how, how far they can stretch, you know, how far and how quickly they can push. So um, to strengthen the muscle, it's a combination of, of, of a number of things. And, but all of that will also be um, defined or maybe related to your, 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 your classification point. So, um, but holistically, you have got to make sure that your players, um, before they engage in any activities, they do warm up. Uh, before they even go away, going home, you know, maybe you have to cut your, your session by 15 minutes earlier, and then you have your other your, your rest of your 15 minutes to make sure that they're cooling down. So, um, uh, and, and these workshops, you know, they help to overcome all of those um, uh, sort of gaps that we, we're seeing, especially in our games. So um, you, you would definitely gonna be helped, you know, and, and, and I'm hoping you're gonna be there on for, for our, excuse me, uh, for our, our, our workshops, you know, a practical workshop, and then you will see, you know, uh, what type of warm up and warm up drills and, and uh, muscle strength training, uh, skills training that you have to go, you have to do to in order to assist your players. So you will, you're definitely gonna be helped. We're not, we're not gonna let you um, um, uh, suffer all alone. We're there to support each other. Okay, uh, thank you. She's ready. Go ahead. Um, with the cooling down, yeah. Do you does it only apply with uh, practice sessions, or if you're in a game or tournament situation, how can you apply that? If there's a next team that has to go on court, and you guys have to go and go to the change rooms and stuff okay um look it it, it, it is very very important we we, you, we should not sort of um uh, fear or run away from from that so um uh, during the tournaments you can always have if if because there's always time situation that one team has got to be on court now you have to move 
you can take your team outside, okay? So you can take your team outside, let them actually do the cool down outside and, and do the stretches outside. Maybe um, you're going to be missing out in terms of the, you know, the, the two laps basically on court, but at least, at least you're, 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 you're stretching the muscles during the, 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 the breathing exercise, it will help to a certain extent, you know, um, not necessarily it has got to be on court every time. I fully understand that it, it does happen, especially with us here in, in, in within our games with a super sport where you, you play the game, the next team has got to come in, you have to move. So you basically have to actually uh, be proactive as a coach, find ways in order to, 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 do, to do your warm up, because you, sorry, to do the cool dance, because you know how crucial it is, you know, to have your team, you know, cool down in order to get the muscles ready and fully prepared for the next game. You'll, I can tell you now, in most cases, players that do not cool down, they go straight, shower, go relax. Late at night, they're having muscle pain. They suffer. Come the next day, um, uh, because the game was very intense, come the next day, the player struggles. You know, during your warm-up session, you could easily tell that the player is struggling because the muscles have not fully prepared, you know, um, or, or be ready for, for the game that is going to be coming. Now you gotta make sure that you balance it. Now you're gonna be quickly remember we spoke about observations um, uh, earlier in our presentations. You observe now what is important and who is struggling and why is a player struggling, you know? And th that's why sometimes it's crucial, very important that we have physical, either the physical therapist or medical personnel to always be that eye when such is happening, you know? So especially in, such, in big tournament, you, even after the game, it's, 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 very, it's very good and advisable that the players will, will go and see the physiotherapist and say, you know what, this is, this is, this, this is it, this is what I'm struggling with. It's a, it's, it is some sort of a feedback for you as a coach and also for the player. Say, okay, I'm struggling, I'm, I can feel a pain here, and then what must I do? You know, so very, very important to pull down though. You gotta find ways to, to, to you know, be a pro, proactive, find ways to make sure that, you know, the, uh, your team is actually, have done the cool down exercise. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'm put in. Okay. So um uh this is part of what we we spoke about about the technical abilities, you know, speaking about uh, speed and then and agility. So um, it, it, in, in our game of basketball, your team has got to be <laughs> the, the, the ability to push the chair, the power that they have to um, uh, uh, put in, the effort that they should put in, the force that needs to be put in. It, it's very, very important. That, that the quick turn, it's, it, it's very important. It, it, that one second better than the opposition is very, very important. So the force, Okay, we're going to speak about speed. It, 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 we're speaking about force, power, mechanics, the balance, stability, basically, and, and equal speed and agility. So those, those elements alone, it, 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 um, um, uh, it, it gives you a better, um, a, a better, uh, 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 a better second, to, 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 uh, so to say, um, um, when it comes to you know um, uh, winning, you know the, the first head, you get into the first head before the first line before the net, your opponent. Okay, um, we, we we need to make sure that our players they learn to generate power. You know how how do you what exercises do you give your players to generate power? They, you know the reaction in uh, the reaction time. How quickly can your player get to the ball before the other player? There are exercises that you have to do. You know, remember that one exercise with the pull and um, uh, the trailer, horse and trailer exercise, where you get one player holding to the next player at the back, and then at the player in front is just pulling. You know, and and it, it, it and it is not just pulling as in a normal push, an ordinary push. It's just just the speed and power that has to be put in. And and for uh, advanced players, maybe elite players, 
you increase the numbers instead of you know, one or, or, or two players, we put on three players and the other player just pulling three players as fast and quickly as they can, you know, and then can just let go at some stage and see how quickly that player can, you know, can, can, can push, you know, power uh, with that power and speed. Okay, um, initial power and generation, very crucial. And we, 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 we're putting a lot of emphasis um, on on our uh, on, to, on on our players to make sure that the first two pushes defines how quickly you can go. The first two for first two pushes of the chair define how quickly you can pull off the acceleration. It's very very important, and um, I'm not, I, I think they 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 there are videos that Mr. Smith will play for you guys. Uh, uh, to see because we realize our mistakes in a previous slide, a pre previous presentations. So um, we will share some of the videos. And uh, obviously with uh, deceleration, that's where your agility comes in. How quickly can you stop? How quickly can I change direction? Remember, there will be um, a technical uh, workshop from our from our referees. You know, in before you 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 make contact on defense, you know, you have to sort of decelerate, you know, you gotta give time and distance and how quickly can you do that? That's where your uh, your agility comes into play. So the force, the power, the mechanics and balance will tell you and define your speed and agility and 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 and, and stopping quickly and, and accelerating quickly, those skills will be executed and, and 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 be shown to you guys in our in, in our technique uh, in our shop coming through so your players need to learn and be able to to to, to push with speed and power and the game is, is is based on that and you'll find teams that are now sort of playing a man-to-man -man game they're playing and they're playing a zone press and you guys as coaches should be able to read and react to that and your team if your team is a slow team they will definitely struggle, you know. So there will be drills that will be shared with you guys in in order to work with your team. But if those drills are not cut in stone, you guys will help. You can you should be able to modify to fit your team, your approach. Remember, I spoke about where you want to see your team in that in the in the in the season to come. You guys will have to modify those drills in order. Um, um, uh, 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 to reach, you know, the ultimate goal for that particular season. So we will share what we have, but you guys can always modify based on what your team's ability is, you know, because if your technical skills are not there, then obviously there are certain things that you have to do in order to, to up the game of your team or the speed of the team, you know, and, and, and therefore that will help with the tactical ability as well in, in a game situation. Is there any question around that? We will share all of these slides with you guys. Um, uh, uh, definitely, each and every one of you will have um, uh, something to take home with in order to, to, to just refer back and see if this will actually help you in, in, your, in your training sessions. Okay, the key elements to speed. Once again, pushing frequently, how quickly you can go. Accelerating, quickness. Yes, um, mental focus and decision-making. When do I start, you know, uh, picking up my speed? You know, when do I then um, decelerate? So the, the decision as to when and how is very important. Your mental focus into now I'm ready to to take off. You you you've got to be ready in order to to win that extra two seconds, you know, to your op 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 from from your opposition, you know. So it, you gotta better yourself at all times, you know. And the players need to learn to better themselves at all times. You as coaches also apply that speed in a game situation. I'm actually when I try and encounter you in your game approach how quickly can I react to that as well? There's certain speed, the speed of the mindset, the speed of the physicalness, you know? So 
it's very important that you you you, you apply that you apply those okay um, uh, they gotta be sport, sport specific you know with wheelchair basketball there's certain drills and 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 speed drills that you you need to work on in order to develop your your your, your upper body strength you know your 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 muscles your 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 tricep your your biceps and your your um uh I forgot the ones at the back of your shoulders, you know, around the scapula. And those that have done, you know, uh, biology will be actually try and help us out. But um, you, you have to develop all of those muscles, you know, your change of direction and deceleration, it's very, very important. And these, once again, they help you, you know, to, to, to avoid picking up fouls, or maybe they will actually force you if you do not pay attention to what you're doing and create or maybe pick up a lot of fouls in the game situation. So um, the uh, speed, it's, 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 it's what it's all about right now. And, and then if you look, um, I'm not sure how many of you guys have watched the Commonwealth Games and the three-on-three -three Commonwealth Games, the first ones ever, wheelchair basketball, amazing the talent we've seen there and the skills, the quickness you know, of, of those players. Um, and we're fortunate enough that, you know, our team, you know, we also uh, sent the team up to to the Commonwealth Games. And surely uh, those players that went there, they, they, re they really learned a lot when it comes to the quickness, the decision making in, in, in terms of speed and, and obviously the defensive mechanism, you know, that have to play, play in, 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 in a game. So I'm, I'm sure they must have learned a lot. So speed is, is, is very, very crucial in a game. I'm one for speed, honestly speaking. Power. Anybody? Any question? Katie, you're too quiet. Anyone, guys? We can move to the next one. Okay. Um, the variables that affect the speed with your focus, if you're not focused enough, it will definitely affect your speed. The reaction time, yeah, once again, a range of motion, range of movement, um, uh, uh, you're not warm up proper, and you'll be, you will be re uh, restricted. So it will definitely affect your speed. Uh, power, if you didn't actually put in the work, you know, you work on your power, uh, that's the, the effort that you put in, it will definitely affect your 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 your, your excuse me your your speed. Uh, uh, chair set up, very very important. Um, you find if you can uh, because of your, of our classification, if you take a player sitting, um, let's say maybe a one point or maybe a two and a half or two, you let them sit on a, a three point five chair or maybe a four pointer chair you'll find their speed will be affected, their balance will be affected. So um, uh, the dimension of the chair itself, the wheelchair itself would affect, you know, the, the, the speed of the player. Sitting position, strapping will also affect your speed because some players, they do not have the full core uh, muscles or the balance. And then therefore, as they push forward, they may not be able to come back up again. Remember that movement I spoke to you about the technical you know, um, ability of your trunk. So that up and down movement, if you do not strap in, it would definitely gonna be, um, you're gonna, your speed gonna be compromised over there. So it's very, very important that, you know, your players are, are, are strapped proper, you know, even before the classification because your strapping defines or it's going, it's going to go on the, your card, your classification card, how the player, the player, player A is, is strapped, you know. So in a game situation, your, your the classifiers are looking at you, they're looking at your card, they're comparing, you know, and they say, okay, that player was not strapped when we did the classification, now it's strapped. Uh, what is this? What is this now? And then there's going to be calling a coach and the player might just come. The coach will get a take and it's going to be, um, a sort of uh, probably two point or maybe sort of a fine afterwards. I'm not sure, but you'll hear that from the uh, officials coming into the camp, coming to the workshop. Okay. Um, the technique, how do you push your chair? You know, uh, remember when I spoke about, you know, the, the, uh, the fingers on the push rim, the thumbs on the chair, I'm sorry, on the tires. 
And uh, are you pushing correctly? Are you starting at 11, finish up at two? Are you doing at 12, finishing up at, at, um, at three? So all of that actually does affect your speed. So your, 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 your body, your conditioning, you know, are you overweight? Okay, are you underweight? So um, uh, I, I, th therefore, that that much of a you know um, a body fat missing, body fat over, it does affect your, your your pushing because you're carrying a lot of weight. Unfortunately, your speed will be compromised. Your agility will be compromised as well. So very very important that this you you look at when you also having your team at your practice sessions. What do they need to focus on? Okay, you can see player A because sometimes, some of the time, some of the time you will have to adjust your training session in order to accommodate other players because a certain player is struggling, and then you can design your training session in order to accommodate that player. But you need to make sure that the entire team is not being compromised. But that player needs to make sure that they up the game. Now it's very much difficult nowadays. To, to, to take in players in a game um, uh, uh, into the team that are overweight. So you push those players or maybe you will know when you want to play that player, you know, at what intervals you're going to be playing the player that impact uh, a player that you feel that your player will come in if it's overweight or under. So it's very, very important to be aware of that and understanding your player's ability. And in, if, if you do that, then it's going to be easier for you to say, okay, fine. Um, um, this is now what I'm set, you know, for the team, and this my practice session will be structured in order to accommodate everybody in the team. Any questions there? Um. Are you okay? You're gonna be playing the video there, Mr. Smith. I'm not yeah, sure what's just changing over. Okay. So now, guys, we're gonna be playing some of the videos, you know, just to show you guys. And some of these videos, um, you can you can watch them on YouTube, and also they they are uploaded in our, on our website under Wheelchair Basketball South Africa. So you can always visit our website and 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 so. Zoom through and see what is 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 out there. Okay. Um, we 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 had an uh, a very a very fortunate um, um, uh, sort of presentation from the, the state last year. Uh, Coach Doug Ghana, uh, he's one of my mentors. So he um, is is coaching at the University of um, uh, Texas. And um, uh, they got a team there called Moving Math, you know. So he's loading this 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 university. They they're doing excellent. They're loading a lot of videos. So you guys, please um, help yourself out. You know, if you want to learn more and um, about what other countries are doing, and visit those websites and the YouTube uh, videos and watch. And like I said, some of them are, have been loaded from from our side by Mr. Smith and which are possible South Africa. So one video we were working on on, 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 on strength, core muscle, stability. Okay. okay. The guy has got the medicine ball. Okay. I don't think we've got the volume there, Mr. Smith. I'm seen to having a bit of technical mm. difficulties with the sound, so we might have to yeah. share those links uh, after the after the presentation. But I could yeah. play the video without us uh, without him talking, and then then the guys can watch yeah. it afterwards. We'll just do the lip readings now, so.
We work on the shoulders there. You work on your core balance. Oops. Sorry. So you can even get your players to do these drills. You know, and they can do them one um, by themselves. You get them sit on the chair, let them sit against the wall, let them uh, pop the ball, a medicine ball, pop it up onto the wall, receiving it. You know, and uh, you watch. You know how well the guy's is it's stable. You know, in, in his chair, and um, you can do as many as as pretty much three reps in order to. Um, in, in order to get an effective result. So uh, we all know that this, you know, your waist, uh, your core muscle plays a, a massive role in terms of your stability on court, pushing the chair or maybe taking a shot, okay? So now you can see there, as he's no longer moving his waist or core muscles, just working on his arms. <clears throat> and um, yeah. Uh, sorry, guys, we're having some technical difficulties, yeah? Yeah, that's okay, Mr. Smith. Just play the next one, um, if you can. Um, just leave it rolling, and uh, I'll, 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 I'll try and maybe explain what it doesn't look like it's working now. Okay. All right, we just have to share share the links. I'm not gonna share the videos, guys. Um, I, I, somebody did give me a whooping for sharing a video on WhatsApp and said, there is but but our data, man, my brother, yes, Bulada, you know. So um, <laughs> um, I'm so sorry about that. So from now on, we're just gonna share links. And if you guys are able to uh, uh, to connect, uh, please do so. But we were certainly gonna share the links with you guys. As I said, you know, so you guys will be taking some umpago from home you know, for, for, for home after the, the workshop. So um, will you, it will be exciting. It will be exciting to have you guys on the workshop. Very exciting, I'm excited. So far, is there any questions while we're trying to sort ourselves? There we go. We, so can't even, is... we can't even blame ESCOM. I don't know what's going on. I do apologize. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so Sipa, I think that, just, uh, just talk through yeah. it and we'll share the videos. I'll share yeah. the YouTube links. Okay. So um, uh, also very guys, uh, uh, the plyometric exercises as well, the core training is very, very important. Um, like the one you saw earlier, where a player is sitting uh, against the wall uh, sideways and just working on the core muscles. And sometimes you're going to have um, a player, uh, you can have your player I mean, facing the wall and, 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 and having a medicine ball. Depending on the weight, try not to actually give them a heavy weight, but depending on the weight of the ball, let them bounce the ball you know, from on the wall, receive, back on the wall, receive, okay? And you can they can do a uh, a pass as well, and that actually works on your shoulders. You know, it works on the strength of your shoulders, how far in terms of the distance. And now, when you when you you end up having to use a proper ball, you know, basketball, 
you you feel it becomes lighter. So your that diplomatic um, and and core muscle training are, uh, are very very important also because it 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 gives you that um, uh, that, act, that, that develop that strength. So over there, I, I try to indicate how many reps and how many sets you can do in a, at your training sessions because you need. You need your players being able to take those long shots, you know, um, a distance shots in a game situation. So those that that exercise it helps with with that. And um, uh, moving away from that a little bit, your 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 push ups. You can do push ups in a training session. You develop that because you need those shoulders to be as strong. And then you also have got to do your back muscles as well, because with if your back muscles are weak, and your 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 your, your front muscles and push up muscles, the trapezes, they call them trapezal muscles, are actually a bit weak. I mean, sort of a bit stronger than the back muscles. Then your shots tends to actually go off, you know, a little bit. So it's important to work on your on your, on on your on on your um your push ups. And you can get your players off the off the chair. Let them sit on the floor and do those 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 push-ups. They can actually pass the ball even off the chest, you know, without they're not without being strapped. Get a medicine ball. Let them work on that. And uh, I, for one, I tend to do that at home. But I just got like the five kilograms weight, and I'm just using that, you know. So um, it it does help a lot just to keep the body in a little bit in shape, you know. But you know, uh, but in a game situation and 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 uh, uh, practice sessions where you want to get your team, you can push it very, very hard. So um, biometric exercises are very crucial. And, and ideally, you got to have them a medicine for. We will show you guys uh, all of these exercises and we'll share the link. Is there any questions around that? No question. Okay. All right. Uh, drills for acceleration. You can do an L drill. You know, so from some baseline, you know, acceleration from the top to the first three for the first first three meters. And 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 remember, guys, this is high speed. You know, this this is high speed. Okay. And then you you can back it up with your um a figure of eight. You know, you put three uh, three coins on the floor and you have your players to actually do the figure of eight and then you get them to accelerate again. So uh, a very, very good workout. You know, it works on your skills, it works on your muscles, uh, you work on your chest skills and it also works on your kaido. So um, that, and, and then ended up with the power. So, uh, so all of those elements, they come into play, it's just one throw. So um, the L drill will also going to be showing you guys, um, you know, of course the videos are not uh, helping us now, 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 but we're definitely going to be sharing those with you. Okay, all these drills and workout acceleration after they, they, they change the direction, you have to learn, you know, players have got to learn once they change direction, how quickly, remember we spoke about time and, and, and how quickly you can react. You know, I, and I said to you guys, the first two pushes, once you change direction, how quickly can you react? B, it, it's an, it's an, um, um, your own offense or alternative your own defense. So you need to know how quickly, you know, how fast can you change direction? How quickly can I stop and decelerate? So your, 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 your acceleration, there are drills that are very, very specific for that. So you will, we will be showing you guys, you know, on those drills. Any questions, guys, around that? This is basically, you know, the easiest part <laughs> about our trainings, you know. So, and 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 and, and obviously, we will, the elements of of all of this is how do we then get our players to up a, their skills level? You know, how do they we have them to up their acceleration and power, agility? So we will be sharing those. Any questions there, guys?
Are there any questions? Uh, we do apologize on the hiccups on you know out of the videos not being able to play. Go ahead, Was. Yeah, Sanborn. Sanborn, sir. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my my question is uh, is to you and uh, Mr. Gombe. Mm. Um, I've noticed like uh, the turnout out of the uh, the coaches and and everything. So I just want to find out how um how how will you guys man um I don't know how to put it man how will you uh deal with the other coaches that like were supposed to come through and that are already like on the on this level but they didn't um come for um this uh, refresher course or something like that. Um, uh, okay. well, sorry, I'm not quite understanding you. Was so you're talking about the ones that are level one now and they haven't attended the refresher? What's going to happen to them? Is that what you're asking? That's what I'm asking. Well, I've, it's quite simple. We said if the coaches haven't done the refresher and they now rock up to coach at say the the Super Bets National Women's League or uh, Terence De Brain or Joma Kamalo um, Super Sport depending on what the minimum requirements are there, then um, Mr. Saunders will basically not allow that team to take part. So that's 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 what the rule has been. So um, uh, we, we've made it clear from the outset. Um, again, it's not about um, any coaches that are currently qualified as a level one or a level two losing their, they are still level one coaches, but they haven't refreshed. So until they refresh, they cannot, uh, they cannot coach. Yes, we've had some challenges with uh, with load shedding and that, and that's why we have made the facility available to to share the videos and the and the workshops, etc. Um, but um, you know, the, each coach will have to write the exam, and um, yeah, and they've got they've got to be practically assessed by by uh, Mr. Gumbi and uh, and Trooper and the likes, and um, once once they're happy. That the coaches are up to scratch, then uh, they can they can continue. The, the the reason why WBSA is doing this is that if you look at the Super Sport Series, for example, some of the <clears throat> some of the level of coaching, not for all teams. Obviously, there are teams that uh, that have you know continue to to uh, do good work, but there some of the teams the the, the coaches uh, weren't up to scratch, and this is part of the reason why we are doing this. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks for that question, wise. And I, and also, it's it's basically the standard, uh, uh, wise man. That's the standard that um, uh, everybody needs to uh, feed in, and uh, there is a directive from from our our our, our structure. And that we have everybody involved in which a basketball must be at a certain standard. So we, 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 this is, this is, this is what we're trying to, to, to achieve that everybody is actually at the suitable standard to coach. You know, there's, there's, there's a value of the performance of the team, you know, to, 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 to the value of what, you know, the structure is, is hoping to, to achieve. So if, if, if our coaches, um, uh, are qualified and they're doing a great job from the ground ground uh, ground uh, grassroots level. Very important that you know it will it will certainly help with the uh, uh, at the at the higher level of the game. You know, and this does, does doesn't actually question the ability of the coaches. You know, we're not questioning whether you are able to do the work or not. We're just merely trying to support and and develop basketball to a direction where. You know the the entire world is moving because this is not just wheelchair basketball South Africa doing this. You can you can go through to all the Australian website, you your uh, Europe, you can go to the American websites and all that. You'll still pick up that they're actually doing pretty much what we're doing. And um, I, I think at some stage, Tropa did mention and say, you know what? In America, 
they, they is so chuffed on what wheelchair basketball is doing, uh, wheelchair basketball South Africa is doing there, because you know it's it it hasn't been done you know uh, at, at the grassroots level in 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 America. So you know that's for me it's it, I'll take it as a compliment because we we're trying by all means to uplift the standards of every coach we help in our country. By so doing, we're also uplifting the game itself and our players being able to understand you know, the set structure and set direction that which a basketball is opting to move to. So, yeah, it's a good question. Um, even our level twos, you know, coaching level, coaches that are in level two, they will have to actually um, uh, do the refresher course. Not that we're questioning or they're going to be moving out from their position or starting their position, which is it's a refresher course. They're not starting um, afresh. It's just a refresher course. I think um, I, know in I think it's uh, important it's the, the principle that the referees go through. If you look at yes. the international referees, every two years they have to do a refresher course. Obviously, you know the rules change, um, you know the the mechanics change, all of that sort of stuff. So the uh, the referees have to go through co constant, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, refresher, uh, you know, workshops and all of that. Um, and the same applies to to coaching. You know, there's new techniques that come into the game. Um, there's new strategies. There's new tactics and all of that. So, so that is the, the the reason why we do it. And 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 with all due respect to a lot of coaches that have come through workshops and and and, and done level ones and twos um, uh, courses over the years, where are they now? You know, they tend to come in for a couple. They do the workshops. Uh, and then we don't see them again. So you know, this this way we're trying to to sort of keep the momentum going and keep the keep the, the interest uh, and the you know to keep the guys that that are that are dedicated in the in the sport and help them grow. And that's the reason why we're doing it this way. Yeah. Um, Sipa, I have a question on the chat here um, on the matter of strength and conditioning. How often does a coach plan a session that is only for only for strength and conditioning? Um, uh, for me, uh, if you if you we go back to um, the preseason uh, uh, flight, um, I, I did mention that you know uh, the, 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 for me this is where this is an area where you focus a lot on 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 conditioning your team. I don't think you'll pick it up here, Jerry. I think it's on the previous um, flight. So your preseason your preseason um, uh, 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 would 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 help you because. Uh, in your preseason, you you will you will then see where your team is at, and how quickly you want to get your team to 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 the fitness level. So, um, for me, um, um, uh, I would say preseason, uh, uh, once a week, you make sure that you focus on your strength training, and 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 then the rest of the weeks you work on your skills. You know skills, skills levels, and all that. You know the technical ability of things. But during your, you know, but during your um your preseason session, it it it's it is where you you will you you feel it is it's it's where you need to focus on 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 polishing everything that you feel needs to be polished before you 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 get into your game plans because your game plans are now sort of specific to your tactical abilities. And I said to you guys, the tactical part. It's actually what is letting us down right now. The decision, the good decision making on court, is what is actually letting us down now. That you can put as much effort, you can be as, as fit as hell, but if your tactical ability, reading and reacting, understanding, seeing the gaps, uh, seeing the sill, seeing the peak, is 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 there, and you're not seeing it, you know, then it becomes a problem. No matter how fit and 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 energetic you are. So you, those are the elements I feel your game plan, you know, your, 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 the game, uh, your practice plan should be uh, uh, applicable because by that time, your team should be strong and fit enough to, um, uh, to, 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 to handle, you know, the, the, the intensity of those games. Because if your, your, your fitness level is not there, your, obviously, your mental status would not would, would definitely your focus will, will be compromised. You won't be able to to understand what the coach is giving you. So you gotta do your fitness level prior 
you know, applying your game plans because sometimes you give guys a game plan and some of the guys, you, they look blank. You look, they're just looking through you. You know, you just like looking there as you can tell that, hey, you know what? I, I, I do not understand what the coach is telling me now. So I'll suggest, yes, pre-season, focus on it. Maybe in season, maybe once a week or maybe give it, give it an hour, you know, in that particular uh, 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 training day give it an hour, depending on the level of your team is at, you know, so you gotta read and assess your team. If your team is ready, you feel that they can take, it's all good. I remember, you know, once again, I'll come back to us. We used to train our training sessions as a, as a national team. We used to train as if we're playing five quarters in a game. And, 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 and that was our mindset. Everybody in a team, understood one thing we train for five uh, we, we train as if we're playing five quarters which means we didn't want to lose a, 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 a game in a fourth quarter but we were going to win a game in a fifth quarter so the energy level we, 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 we're massive you know and from from, from the way go everybody those 15 16 players that were part of the squad or the team knew exactly what was the task you know, and everybody was, was training and focusing towards that. And we, we, used, we used to push each other, you know, we, 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 our level of thinking and support, you know, it, to each other was high. No matter whether you're one pointer or 4.5, everybody was pushing to that, to that level. So um, uh, that was the mentality when we played, when, when we were still playing for the national team. So you can actually define as a coach, Look at the team, assess your team, and then you can tell whether your team is ready, you know, um, uh, to take, you know, um, um, uh, any any team out there. If the the strength training is not there, then what what you need to be focusing on, you know. So, uh, but yeah, see if there is a gap in, a, in 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 your training sessions. If you feel you need to, a player cannot, you know, like I said earlier, previously, that's. Some of our players that can't even shoot free throws, their ball doesn't even reach, you know, the net or touches the ring. For me, that's a concern. So that means your strength training there is crucial, very important, you know, because that one basket you miss on a free throw can actually cost you a game or the tournament. Very important. Thanks for that question. It's a beautiful, it's a great question. Like it. All right, guys, are there any more questions? Um, that is the end of uh, SIPA's presentation and the, and the wo online workshops. Um, I think also on the on the groups, um, give it some thoughts, um, give us some ideas on other topics you might want us to to do certain workshops. Um, there's, there's nothing stopping us doing a couple more of these workshops, uh, even just for your general, general knowledge and that, even if it's not part of a an official workshop, but we can certainly look at doing a couple of sessions uh, throughout the year. So just if you have anything that you specifically want to want to cover, then drop drop it on the on the group, and we'll see what we can do. But um, in the meantime, if there's no other questions, we can uh, call it a night, and uh, we will see those that are coming through to the workshop on uh, well, some arrive on Sunday, but uh, we kick off at ten a.m. Um, on on Monday morning and um, yeah, be ready and let's uh, let's uh, learn a lot from uh, Mr. Gumbi and Mr. Johnson. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, guys. I'll appreciate it. All right. Yeah, Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.